Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So happy, so blessed to be back in the house of the Lord today. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing. Hallelujah. Not only in the heavens, but what he's doing in the earth. I want you to know today that God is manifesting some things in our lives. And it's up to you and I to seize what God has for us. And I'm excited about the manifestations of the Lord showing up in our lives. Hallelujah. God is so gracious. He's so loving. He's so peaceful. I thank God for his goodness today. Hallelujah. I'm excited about who he is in my life. Hallelujah. We thank Jesus for his blood. Hallelujah. That was shed for our sins. And we thank the Holy Spirit on this morning for leading and guiding us to all truth. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord, for being such a wonderful God. We thank you today, Lord, for being our father. We thank you for for Jesus, for being our big brother. We thank the Holy Spirit today for being our comforter. Hallelujah. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you would touch each and every person that's here on the broadcast or one that may be watching later today. I pray now, God, that you would meet them at the point of their need, God. I pray that you would bless them abundantly, God. I pray that you would heal them, Lord, not only just in their body, but also heal their land. Father, I thank you right now for the goodness, hallelujah. I thank you right now for the mercy. I thank you right now for the grace, God, that you extend to us, hallelujah. And we just bless you on this day, hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift up holy hands in your presence today, God, simply because you are worthy of our praise and you are worthy of our worship, hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, this felt like giving God a prayer and some praise this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is moving us from our regularly scheduled program, and he wants me to speak on a two-part series that I'm excited to share uh, with you all on this day. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Numbers. Hallelujah. The book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 13. Uh, we want to start with verse number 17. Hallelujah. Uh, just remember in this season that the theme this year is kings and queens, a specified and implied task or mission for God. Kings and queens, specified and implied mission for God. God is raising up his people to not just uh, 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 act like or call themselves kings and queens, but to walk in this earth as kings and queens of the Most High. And he has given all of us a specific task that he wants us to do, a specific mission that he wants us to do. Hallelujah. He'll give the command, but it's also implied things, things that he may not mention, but we're supposed to do anyway. One is to love our neighbor. Even though he said that, we got to remember in all cases that we need to love thy neighbor as thyself. Hallelujah. Regardless of what you think about him, I want you to know that God instructs us. Hallelujah. It is implied through all things that we love our neighbor as ourself. Hallelujah. God is going to manifest some things in your life, church. Hallelujah. And we need to look like God in the earth. I want you to know that the, that the uh, harvest is ready. There are people who need to know who Jesus is. The harvest, uh, 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 the, 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 the farm, uh, the vineyard is ready for the harvest. And I want you to know that people are ready to receive God right now. Hallelujah. There's so much going on in the world today, but I believe it's a setup. Hallelujah. For us to draw people in through the word of God. So I hope that you're ready for what God has in store for you. Numbers chapter 13, starting at verse 17. Hallelujah. 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 Numbers 13, verse 17. And it says, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether 
in tents or in strongholds. Verse 20 says, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Remember that. Bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin and unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron and uh, Ahaman and Shishe and Tamah, the children of Anak, were. Now Abram was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Verse number 23. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol. Somebody shout Eshcol. They came unto Brook of Esco and cut down there thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought up the pomegranates and of the figs. The place called the Brook of Esco because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And for a few moments, I'd like to talk to you from the subject, temporary brook, excuse me, permanent brook versus temporary brook. A permanent brook versus temporary brook. Father, we thank you and we bless you right now for this appointed time and appointed season. Father God, I deny self. I pray that the people of God would see all of you and none of me. I pray now, God, that you would speak through me today, that somebody may receive your word, God. I pray today, God, that somebody will hear your word and you will call and your word would cause them to move forward in the things of God. I pray, God, pray today, God, that someone will hear your word today and that they may be elevated up to that high place that you have called them to be. Father, I pray a blessed word. Hallelujah, on top of your anointed word. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will reach out to each and every soul today, God. I believe you have a blessing for them, God. Satan will serve you notice you have no authority. You are defeated foe, and the blood of Jesus is against you. God, I can you to praise the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Temporary brook versus permanent brook versus temporary brook. Um, the passage or the chapter uh, 13 in the book of Numbers uh, start out with a conversation. But in this particular conversation, God is talking to Moses. And if the truth be told, anytime before we get ready to do anything, uh, we want the Lord to speak to us. Uh, as Christians, we have to get to a place in God that we don't make a move unless God tells us to. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 we don't make a move until God gives us directions. Uh, we don't make a move until we have the confirmation of the Lord to do that thing. So right here in the first verse in chapter number 13, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Uh, so God is talking to Moses here, and he says, I need for you to send out some men, preferably 12, to send out some men to search the land of Canaan, which I have given you. In the military, we call this word search, we call it reconnaissance or a recon. It's where we go out and we observe or recon something that we're about to attack, something that we are about to seize. We want to go and get the what's up of what's happening out there. Uh, we go out there, what's called a salute report, 
Okay? In this salute report, we want to see the size of the enemy. We want to see the size, the activity, the location of the enemy. We want to see what's happening. We want to see the terrain. We want to see what type of equipment they have. We want to see the use stands for the uniform. We want to know all of these things about the enemy before we go, or about the territory, before we go into that arena. So God told Moses to send 12 men out, leaders, if you will, to go out and to recon or search the land of Canaan, which was the land that he had given them. Uh, so he had every ruler. He, he, he said, go and get every, go and get a man, one from each tribe, and they are to be the rulers that are among them. So God not only, he didn't just grab any men, but he grabbed ones that were supposed to be a leader or a warrior, if you will. Uh, one that should should have wisdom and, and, and had great trust in God. God sent leaders out for this recon. And verse number three said, And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And in verses four through uh, 16 uh, it begins to name those individuals. So picking up at verse number 17, it says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get up this way southward, and go into the, unto the mountain, and see the land, what is what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong, or whether they uh, be few or many. This is very important because God told Moses to tell them to go into the land, but go up into the mountains. See, if you ever want to get a true view of something, you got to look at it from a high level, or in other words, a high perspective. There are many people in the, in the body of Christ, uh, you look at the things that God has told you that he's going to give you. You look at the things that God, you, you know the things that God said that he's going to manifest in your life. But you look at them from a lowly perspective, meaning you look up at them. And because you look up at them, hallelujah, now, now you have a different perspective from what God has. So, so God told Moses to tell the leaders or the 12 to go up into the mountains so they would have somewhat of a God's perspective of what the land looks like. Mm. It's very important to, under, to know that every time that God wants you to look at something, he wants you to look at it from somewhat of his perspective. Well, what do you mean by somewhat, Pastor? What I mean by somewhat is uh, uh, even a mountain view ain't a kingdom view. Hallelujah. I want you to know that, that, that a mountain view is a good view. It's a high view. It's the highest view that you can get if you on earth. But a mountain view would never be the same as a kingdom view. So first, God is trying to get Christians to realize I need to have a mountain view of what God is saying. And then as my faith increases in God and as I begin to trust God even more, I'll move from a mountain view from a kingdom view. I want you to know that today, church, when you got a kingdom view of what God is showing you, I'm trying to tell you, you will look at that thing like God. Uh, I want you to know when you have a kingdom view, you'll look at that thing like God and it not only look at it like God, you will you will receive it like God. Hallelujah. And you will seize it like God. Hmm. Hallelujah. I want you to know today uh, it's all right to start out with a mountain view. It's all right to start out with a view that gives you somewhat of a perspective of what God sees. But once you begin to trust the Lord, you got to learn how to operate. From a kingdom view. Let the church shout kingdom view. I want you to know today, hallelujah, that when you have a kingdom view, there will be nothing in the land that can defeat you. I want you to know today, once you move from a mountain view, if you ain't got a mountain view today, I suggest that you start there. But when you move from a mountain view to a kingdom view, you're going to be in a place that you can see things happening that others can't see. Hallelujah. You will never be able to be bamboozled. You will never be able to be bewildered if you live from a place of 
kingdom view. Because in the kingdom, I can see all things even before they manifest on earth. I want you to know today, if you believe in God for something today, and he's shown you that he's going to bless you with something today, and he's going to manifest something in your life today, I want you to know that's a kingdom view. If God has shown you something, and you haven't seen it in the natural, that is a kingdom view. So you are already operating because you know the Lord and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You already operating from a kingdom view. The problem is that God says when it's time to obtain what I have shown you, you go back to a ground view as opposed to a mountain or a kingdom view. Mm. I want you to know you will never be able to obtain anything that God has for you. From a mountain view or a ground view. See, the mountain view is just to get you started. The mountain view is just to get you headed in the right direction. But if the truth be told, eventually we move from a mountain view. Well, we move from a ground view to a mountain view. And we move from a mountain view to a place in the kingdom where we see things like God. Oh, my. Mm. Oh, then that pastor go again talking about being like God. I come to let you know that you was made in his image. And if you was made in his image, you should see from the view and see from the perspective that he does. How can you be made in his image but, but, but viewing from the world's image? How can you be made in his image and see things like the world instead of seeing things like our God? Hallelujah. 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 So I want you to know today, God, God had them, had Moses to tell them to go into the land, but go up into the mountain. Go up into the mountain so you can have a better view or a perspective that is somewhat to what God has. Hallelujah. If the truth be told today, if we're not seeing it from God's perspective, we're really not seeing it. Let me say that again. If we're not seeing it, the things that God said he's going to bless you with, if you're not seeing it from God's perspective, you're really not seeing it. Hallelujah. And he said, see the land, what it is, verse number 18, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or, few, or weak, whether they be few or many. Hallelujah. Verse that drop down to number 20. And then it says, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, mm, whether it be good, whether, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. <clears throat> now the time was the time of first ripe grapes. So he had them. I need you to tell them. I need you to go in. <clears throat> I need you to go in. And I need you to bring, hallelujah, the fruit of the land. Why is this so important, Pastor? It's important because there are times because God is so good, you will never be able to describe God's goodness. Mm. I come and let you know that God is so wonderful. God is so merciful. God is so powerful. God is so loving. God sometimes will show up in your life with things that you will never be able to explain. Because I understand if somebody had told me that the grapes in the land of Canaan was unusually big. A grape that big is unusually big to me. God knew that they would not have the right perspective of how good Canaan was based on the words of the twelve. So he said, I need you to bring back some fruit so the people can see how good God is. Some of you, uh, 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 you done lost some confidence in God. What I need for you to do today, what the Holy Spirit needs for you to do today, 
is to look back and remember how good God has already been to you. Because if you can remember how good God has already been to you, then you would understand that God moves from glory to glory. So if you thought he was good 10 years ago, you can't imagine how good he's going to be 10 years from now. I want you to know that God increases. He moves from good. He moves from great to greater. I want you to know that God is is better today than he was yesterday. Well, how can you say that, Pastor? Because what you know about him has increased. See, God, the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is the same yesterday, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if God seems mightier in your life today than he did 10 years ago, it ain't because God became mightier. It's because you have now a greater understanding of who he is. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to say, if you want to know the fullness of God, which you and I would never be able to reach the fullness of God, but it's good to try to obtain that. The closer of the relationship that you and I have with God, the more I get to know about God, the more that I understand how he loves me, it's going to make my perspective of God bigger. And when my perspective of God bigger, then my perspective of what I have in, through him or in him is much greater also because I know about him. See, some people got a lowly, small perspective of God because you got a lowly, relationship, small relationship with God. Some of you have a light bill, water bill, I did my rent and my car payment is due God. Hallelujah. But there's somebody, some people got, I own the dealership faith in God. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this thing simple. Uh, 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 some of you, uh, uh, God, uh, uh, I, I, I need a place to rent God. And that's nothing wrong because we all got to start somewhere. But then somebody owns the real estate company. Mm. I'm trying to keep this thing. I want you to know that God will take you as high as you can believe. Mm. God can move you as far as you can believe that you can go. Mm. I want you to know God. I want you to know that Jesus had great success in dealing with his father. Because his faith level was higher than most. Hallelujah. Not because he was Jesus. I know we want to say that Jesus was was able to do the things he was because he was Jesus. No, Jesus was able to do the things because he had faith. He had confidence. He had trust in the Lord. And it doesn't matter who you are today. I want you to know when you got faith, confidence, and trust in the Lord, your relationship and the manifestation of things happening in your life will be tremendously increased simply because, <clears throat> simply because your faith is at another level. The Bible said the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's important for you and I to always have ourselves in a position to hear God's word simply because our faith increased. And when your faith increased, now you are being put on a level that now nothing in the world, you have a different perspective. You now have a, a kingdom view. You now have a kingdom view. And when you have that kingdom view, then now the things that you want to receive in God are much easier to obtain because you realize it's not coming by your might or by your, by your power, but by his strength. Hallelujah. I want you to know today simply because you have a faith and a confidence and a trust in God, you can believe much larger than someone who has a lowly and small faith and relationship with God. Hallelujah. And what seems untouchable or unreachable being in that lowly state will now seem obtainable when we have a trust, confidence, and faith in the Father. Hallelujah. Verse 21 says, So they went up and searched the land 
from the wilderness of Zin and unto Rehob as from as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came up to Hebron and unto Haman. So they came up by the south and they came up to this place. Verse 23 says, and they came unto the brook of Eshcol and they cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought the pomegranates and the figs. Okay, so now they have reached this place that's called, uh, came to the brook of Eshko. And they cut down this branch of cluster of grapes. Verse 24 says, the place was called brook of Eshko. Now, now, now. The definition for the word brook is different from the definition of river. A river is a large and often windy stream, stream which drains a landmass, carrying water down from high or higher areas to a low point. So a river uh, 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 is, a, is a larger stream that brings water down, that carries water down from a high point to a low point. But a brook is a body of running water smaller than a river. It's like a small stream, if you will. Uh, 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 so they called uh, this particular uh, uh, brook Esco, okay, Esco. I want you to know today that 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 they named or they called this brook. See, God has placed us in a position uh, uh, of authority in the land that you and I have been given authority to name things. Hallelujah! I want you to know. That today, that, that 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 a horse is not called a horse just because somebody called it a horse. A car is not called a car because somebody uh, because God called it a car. It, it's called a car because somebody called it a car. I want you to know today that God has placed us in a position to be able to call on things. One of the things that I'm believing God for is to create a housing development. And, and, and the street that runs down the middle of it, I want to call it Rain Lane. Uh, uh, my middle name is Terrain, and people call me Rain. I want to call it Rain Lane. Uh, not because God wants me to call it Rain Lane, but God had given me the authority to call it Rain Lane. I want you to know that God is wanting to put his people in position of authority. Hallelujah. God has placed us in a position of authority. So they called it the brook of Esco. And the place was called the brook of Esco because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. The word Esco means cluster. Hallelujah. Uh, the word Esco means a gathering of grapes. All right, a cluster of grapes. So now, uh, uh, more than likely, because they were in a valley, there was a stream running by, uh, and there is a cluster of grapes to be found, so they called it the Brook of Esco. I want you to know that you have that authority, hallelujah, to believe on God for the goodness of the things that he has, and he will even give you the ability to name it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Adam named the animals. Hallelujah. Way back in Genesis. This is nothing new. God wants to put you into a place that you can call. There have been a lot of people who have invented certain things. Hallelujah. And they had the ability to name it. Hallelujah. God is that good. Hallelujah. God is that good today. Verse number, uh, verse number 25 says, And then they returned searching of their land after 40 days. Hallelujah. I know we recognize 
seven to be a day of completion. It is God's perfect number, and it represents completion, and it also represents uh, spirituality. But I want you to know today that 40 is also a day of completion. Hallelujah. Not like seven, but it's completion far as mission. Hallelujah. That's why the, the, uh, 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 the Bible said it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. Well, because after the 40 days and after the flood, it was going to be a new way of living or a new life because God destroyed the first one. Uh, God talked about how Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I want you to know that after that fast, Jesus had a higher revelation and a higher knowledge of God after spending time with him being tempted by the enemy for 40 days and for 40 nights. I want you to know that God will often use the number 40 to complete a mission before he starts a new one in your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but God is getting ready to do something in your life in about 40 days. I want you to know in about 40 days, God is getting ready to do something in your life. God, starting today, is going to put you on some type of 40 day program that in 40 days something is going to manifest that you did not have. Hallelujah. That is good news today. I want you to know that God didn't even tell me to preach that. He's given it to me right now in 40 days. Hallelujah. I wasn't even going to talk about the 40 days but in 40 days God is getting ready to do something that you've been waiting for. God is getting ready to do something or manifest something that he promised you. I don't know what it is. But you're going to know something in 40 days from today. Hallelujah. 40 days from today, you will have a different perspective of what God had told you previously. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I want you to know you need to seize what God is saying to you right now. Because in 40 days, life will be different from you if you can look at it. From if you can move from a mountain, because if you're on the mountain right now, that's fine. Matter of fact, if you're on the ground level right now, that's fine. Believe what I'm saying and move to the mountain. Hallelujah. And then once you get to the mountaintop, if you can continue to believe God through these 40 days, hallelujah, I come to let you know that you are going to have a kingdom view or a kingdom perspective of what God is going to do. Hallelujah. I want you to know today, 40 days. From the time you hear this word is what he says. From 40 days, from the time that you hear this word, I want you to know, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from. I don't know what you've been through. But from the time that you hear this word, if you can believe this word and believe God and have a kingdom perspective, work your way to a kingdom perspective of faith come by hearing and hear by the word of God. So if you're at ground level today, it is okay. If you're at mountain level today, it's okay. If you're at kingdom, you are ready. That's great. Stay there. But I want you to know it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're ground level, mountain view, or whether you're kingdom view. I want you to know today, 40 days from when you hear this word. So I don't care if, if someone don't hear this word today and they hear it 10 days from now, your 40 days is going to start when you hear this word. Hallelujah. 40 days from now, you will be in a different place. Hallelujah. You will be in a different situation. Hallelujah. Some of you may be in a different zip code. Some of you might be in a different job. Some of you might be Hallelujah. Some of you might be in a, di a, a different financial status. I'm coming to tell you, you're going to be in a different situation 40 days from now. Verse 25 says, and they return from searching of the land after 40 days. God is going to have you do some things within these 40 days. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying, church. God is going to have you do some things within these 40 days. This is not the time to try to figure out if you're going to do what God says. In these next 40 days, you need to be doing what God said for you to do. Hallelujah. I don't care how big you think it may be. I don't care how small you think it may be. Whatever God tells you to do, you need to be doing it in these 40 days. Hallelujah. In these 40 days, because these 40
40 days are vital. These 40 days are vital to what God is saying. They are vital to what God is doing. And if we do not do or we do not believe what God is saying, we're going to miss out on what thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to miss out on what thus said the Lord. And verse 26 says, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. God had us to bring the fruit back because there was no way that I can explain that the grapes are the size of basketballs. There was no way I can explain that the grapes are size of a football. There was no way that I can explain that the grapes was the size of a soccer ball. So the Lord had us to bring them back so you will know what is happening in the land of Canaan, which I have given unto you, thus said the Lord. Verse 27 says, verse 27 says, and they told him and said, we came unto a land where thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. This is where I'm going to stop today. Hallelujah, because I see this being two or three or four parts. But anyway, uh, 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 God says, he said, He said, uh, 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 we went to the land that you showed us, that you sent us to go, and surely it flowed. Surely means somebody had said that this particular land is supposed to be a good land. Somebody had said it. Because anytime you use the word surely, you are confirming what somebody else said. And if I said, hey, Brother Micah, I need you to go in the backyard, and in the backyard, there's a black, shiny rock. If you turn over that rock, there's going to be an envelope, and in that envelope is $1,000. Now, he may look at me in front of funny like, backyard, under a black rock, shiny rock, there is $1,000 in an envelope. Okay. So he goes out there. But the reason that he's going out there is based on my word. If I had never given him a word, he would never know that that was there. So even though he may have a ground <laughs> view, he, he, he might not quite believe it. The fact that he starts to make a move toward the backyard, he goes from ground to mountain. Because he's moving or operating on the perspective that he heard a word. See, anytime you and I hear a word from God, it elevates us, our view. It elevates our perspective. So, so the fact that he's walking out there, okay, he goes from ground view to mountain view. And if he continues to walk, because what happened with most Christians, you get out there, okay, but but the, the journey is too far. Uh, 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 or you get out there and says. It's too hot to be out here. Now the elements are affecting you. Uh, some of you will go out there and you may see a wild animal and you say, oh, it's too dangerous to be out here. Whatever your fear is today, the enemy is using it to keep you from getting to the blessing or getting to what God has in store for you. So so, so, so let's say Micah keep, Brother Micah keeps going out. And so he gets out there and he's looking around. And he don't see the rock right off yet. And there are a lot of people, they'll search for a little while, and then they'll give up. Now, now, now you done went through all of that. It, it's hot outside. It was a long journey. Uh, there, there was danger in the land. But, but, but you pressed on and you persevered, okay? Some people get through all of that and get right over top of the blessing that God has for them, and then they turn away because they give up too soon. Oh, they had some pitfalls. Maybe you stepped in a hole and twisted your ankle on your way out there. 
Okay, I'm coming to let you know today on this 40 day journey, journey, I don't care come hell or high water, I don't care what comes against you, you're going to have to keep pressing for 40 days. So Micah gets out there, let's say Brother Micah gets out there and finds the rock, turns it over, and then there is a thousand dollars. I want you to know today, and I'm just using that for an example, but I want you to know today that you're going to have to endure some things. But even though you're going to have to endure some things, if you got a kingdom perspective, hallelujah, you're going to be all right. You'll be able to get through. Let's go ahead and finish up what it says. It says, verse 27, and they told him and said unto him, we came into a land where thou sent us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. So somebody at some point said that that land is good, it's flowing with everything, and, and so when they found the grapes and came back with the report, they said, surely, meaning, yes, you were right. All the things, as you remember, the children of Israel came from Egypt. Remember, they were in bondage. They were slaves. So they, from the time they've been on this journey, and we can talk about that later, uh, uh, this 40-year journey that they went, uh, wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, and it's supposed to be an 11-day journey. We'll talk about that later. But, 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 but nevertheless, they are there. But during that journey, somebody had been speaking about the goodness of Canaan and the goodness of the Lord and what he had prepared for them. And so now when they bring this back, that's why they use the word surely. Somebody, you were right. You were right about Canaan. Canaan is this. Canaan is that. God is good. God gave us a promise and all of that. That's why you use the word surely. Surely reconfirms that I'm saying that what you have said previously is true. See, see, that's why I like, that's why the Bible says, surely the goodness of the Lord. See, somebody done told you that God is good, but then when you realize it for yourself, you say, surely God is good. So you either ought to be the one that's saying that God is good, or you should be the one that's confirming that surely God is good. But I come to let you know that he's good. But I like to say that God is too good. Well, some people like to say God is good. I like to say he's too good. Hallelujah. Uh, God is too good. He said, surely that is flowing. <laughs> now, if he had said, surely there is milk and honey. Lady Crystal, if he had said, surely. That it's milk and honey. We should not expect. A continuation of blessings. <laughs> if he would have said, surely there is. Okay? I can go look in my refrigerator and in my cupboard right now. There is milk and honey. There is not a flowing of milk and honey in my refrigerator and in my cupboard. There is milk and honey in my refrigerator and in my cupboard. What does that mean? What's in there has a not first, it has an expiration date, so it ain't going to last forever. Uh, two, it's in a container, and the container only holds a certain amount. So there is a level in which I can use the honey, and there is a level of how much milk I can drink based on the size of the container. But he said, surely there is flowing milk. And honey. Let me break down milk and honey. Milk is something that we need. It's good for our bones. It's a need. So surely there is flowing milk, which takes care of our need. But then there is also flowing honey, which is sweet, which is a pleasure. So he said, in the land of Canaan, Canaan, that the Lord has provided for us, our need is there, and our blessing and pleasure is there. Mm. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Milk is what I need. Honey is maybe what I desire. I want you to know today that I can live, and you can live without honey. Honey makes something 
that's already good tastes better. Okay? I want you to know that 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 that, that honey, if you never ate honey your entire life, you will be just fine. Somebody need to hear what I'm saying today. I want you to know if you never had honey any time in your life, it would be okay. It would not affect your life at all, except you wouldn't have the opportunity in that arena to enjoy the pleasure of how honey tastes. Hallelujah. The sweetness of God. I want you to know there's a lot of Christians. God has given you what you need, but you haven't enjoyed the sweetness of God. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you to know today that some people, you have never tasted the sweetness of God. You have tasted him providing, but you've never tasted the sweetness. You've never had a chance to enjoy the honey. I remember I ate some people through Thanksgiving. I ate some people's ham, and it was great. But then I had a grandmother that used to put a coat of honey on the, on the ham and then put it back into the, into the oven. And, and every time I would bite that ham that already tasted good, I tasted bits and pieces of this sweet honey that had been baked onto it. Now, now I would have been fine if it had no honey. The honey was to make something great that was already good. Mm. And they come back and said, surely this is a place flowing with our needs and our heart's desires. And we got the grapes to prove it to you. We got the grapes to prove it to you. What are you saying today, Pastor? These grapes need to represent the things of God that you know he has done for you. I don't care if you say today or you not say today. We all have been in a place where something happened in our life and we know that God is the only one that could have done it. Oftentimes we use the word like something happened or something came over me or I don't know where this happened because we ain't had the confidence just to say the Lord, the good Lord did that. But there's some times in your life, I don't care who you are, you might not even be Christian today, you might not even be saved today, you may be from another religion today, I'm telling you today that something has happened to you, and you know you can't explain it, and, and you can't, it's hard to even tell anybody about it, because you understand it happened in a realm that had nothing to do with you. This has happened to me several times that I've shared with the church, and it's been times like I've seen an angel to help us out on that, of course, I explained. But I'm going to explain another time. I'm going to share another time with you before we go today. I'm going to explain another time when this when God became more real in my life. I was in my 20s, and I remember my mom had gave me and my brother a house, and we lived in it. She had moved on to another house. And, and we had the old gas furnaces. I don't know if you remember those. They got those big oil tanks that was on the side of your house, and the, and the line ran up under the house to a furnace. Well, a long time ago, my daddy taught us how to bleed that furnace. Because if you ever let the oil run out and you put new oil in, you get air in the line. So you would have to go up under the line, turn this knob, and he said the oil would sputter out because it's got air in it. He said, but once that tube fill up, when that line fill up, then that oil starts to flow, um, flow fully. When it starts to flow fully, turn it off. Because now you, your line is good. It's back complete. It's back full. He said, from that point, then you can hit the furnace button or light the wick, if you will. Okay? Uh, by hitting the, hitting the button, which lit the wick, and then uh, it turned it on. So I remember doing this. I remember him showing me that as a kid. So they had moved out. I came out home from college, and I remember going up under the house because it had ran out. We filled the tank up, and then now I need to bleed the line. Okay? So I go up under there, and I didn't have a flashlight. But I want you to know that God knows how to cover you, even when you're not thinking clearly. So what happened was I went up under the house with a uh, a globe with a candle in it. I didn't have a flashlight. So I wasn't thinking because I had done this several times. And when the oil came out, it rolled onto a spot all the time. It rolled over to the same spot. It came out, it flowed out, and then we shut it off. 
So I would have come on the candle thinking I'm not worried because I already know where it's going to flow. It always flows that way. So I had the candle over out the way, and the oil was going to flow out of another onto the ground in a certain area that it always flows into. Well, when I turned it on, this was the first time ever that it it the oil went crazy out instead of pouring out. It it went in all directions. And when it went in all directions, I remember this clearly. This is about 30 years ago. I remember when it it went, my eyes got big. I was like, oh, because I knew it never did that before. And all you need is a speck. All you need is a speck to touch this candle. And that's it. That whole house would have blew up. So my eyes got big, right? And as my eyes got big, I turned to the candle. And I could see the oil going toward this candle, then all of a sudden, it's like it was something like this shaped over the candle. It was a small like it was shaped over it because the oil went, and this is probably about four or five inches above the candle. I see the shape. And the only reason I see the shape because when the oil splattered on it, it ran like an umbrella. And it went around. And when it did, I just started crying, saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I knew without a shadow of a doubt, this came from the kingdom realm. I, I can't say that I had anything to do with it. I can't say that that I had anything, that, that, that I'm just that smart or I just got that lucky. Mm -mm, I don't use the word lucky. Uh, I'm trying to tell you when I see, and that's how I know the shape, because when that oil hit it, it just it came down beside the candle. This, most people would say, boy, that's dumb. And I agree. But it had to happen because it took my faith level higher. What you saying? Sometimes God would allow you to do some dumb stuff so he can show you how great he is. See, I know the world teaches you everything that you do dumb or doesn't work. You view it as failure. <laughs> I view it as increase if God is in it. God increased my faith that day. That image would never go away. And if he was that good to a 20-year-old, he's even better to a 50-year-old. I want you to know God, <laughs> God is getting ready to do something but in these next 40 days, church. But I want you to know today that you will not receive it if you're not following his voice. Because everything that he's telling you to do in these 40 days has a purpose. Has a purpose. Has a purpose, church. Hallelujah. Has a purpose, church. Hallelujah. 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 Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. When the enemy wants to take you out, he can't. He can't. He can't. You have a father that protects you. Hallelujah. He knows when it's your time to go. He knows when it's your time to come home and to be with him. Nobody can take you out. For years, for three years, well, even before then, but the last three years of Jesus' life, the enemy wanted to take him out all the time, but he couldn't. Because God had protection. God had protection over him. And that same hedge of protection is over your church. Hallelujah. That same hedge. Not a hedge like, not a hedge that's somewhat like God's. Not a hedge that's someone like one was around Jesus. No, the same hedge of protection that was around Jesus is the same hedge of protection that's around you. Hallelujah. There may be someone here today after hearing this word of God spoke to your heart and today you want to give your life to Christ. I want you to know it's not a game, it's not a gimmick. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And maybe someone here today after hearing this word, you want to rededicate your life. You say, Pastor, I knew the Lord. I know the Lord. 
I'm just in a backslid condition, I'm kind of doing my own thing right now, and I need to get back, hallelujah, in touch, in relationship with my Father. If that's you, we're going to lead you with a prayer of rededication, hallelujah. There may be so many dead hands where you're saying, Pastor, I want to join this ministry, hallelujah. I believe that uh, I have a personal mission with God, and then also I have a corporate mission. And this is the body of Christ that he wants to be connected to. Hallelujah. I believe even online, the Lord, I believe even online, we still can do things for God. God prepared online for service. Hallelujah. And I want to be a part of this ministry. If that's you, we will reach out to you. And last but not least, I'm going to offer a prayer today. And I'll say we all stand in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. So if you want to be saved today, repeat this prayer of salvation after me. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. But I confess and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose on the third day with all power in his hand. And because I confess and because I believe, I believe I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And you pray that prayer today. I want you to know that God saved you and you have not entered into the kingdom of God. And follow the ways of the Lord. And I have to teach you. Hallelujah. Stay in your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God time daily. Hallelujah. It may be someone here today after hearing this word. You want to rededicate your life. Hallelujah. Repeat this prayer of rededication after me. Dear Lord, come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. I promise, Lord. This time, it'll be much better than before. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer today, God says, if you return unto me, I shall return unto you. Hallelujah. And he has. Hallelujah. If you want to be a part of this ministry, reach out to us at Greater Mission Ministries Church at gmail.com or my personal email at Pastor Michael T. Weeks, W-E-A-K-S at gmail.com. Hallelujah. We would love to hear from you. God saved you. Reach out to us. If you really dedicated your life today, hallelujah, reach out to us. Um, if God shared a word with you today, hallelujah, and it's burning down your spirit, email us and tell us about that experience that God has given you. Hallelujah. Uh, your experience will help someone else see Jesus. Hallelujah. And last but not least, I'm going to offer a prayer today before we go into our Holy Communion. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you right now for this appointed time and appointed season. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the, uh, the spirit today. I thank you for the encouragement today, God. Father God, I thank you now because you have spoken to our hearts, God. Thank you for allowing us to see the, the ground level, the mountain view, and also the kingdom view. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would elevate us, God, from the ground to the mountain and from the mountain to the kingdom view, God, the perspective that you see, God. Father God, I pray, God, that you would take us to a place, God, hallelujah, that we may be able to see all of the kingdom, God, and understand you, God. Father, I thank you now for knowledge. I thank you now for wisdom. I thank you now for the understanding of your word. Father, we just thank you and we bless you. Father, I pray for each and every person that's under the sound of my voice. I pray that you would meet them at the point of their need. Father God, I pray for health today. I pray for people that have been going through coronavirus, God. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch each and every one of them, God, I pray for the mindset of people, God, uh, as it relates to the, uh, uh, the vaccinations, God. I pray that you would encourage them today, God, for something that you created, God. I want you to know that man is not smart enough to come up with anything to fight anything. But I want you to know that you are the creator of all the things, God, that protect us. So, Father, I just thank you today for your people. Hallelujah. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for this experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, before we pray for our offering, uh, I want you to know that God laid on my heart. Um, God is going to do something in these 40 days. Hallelujah. And God is asking to sow a $40 seed. Like I said, I wasn't even going to talk about the 40 days. He gave it to me during the sermon. And then he also, as I heard going to offer it, he, he mentioned this to me. I pray that you receive what you have heard today. God has planted a seed on the inside of you. Hallelujah. If the truth be told, God is not even requiring us to give the seed. God is requiring us to be obedient to it. 
He's the one that's going to give us the forty dollars to sow. He's asking that we receive and be obedient to the word because the forty dollars is not the issue. The issue is obedience. So he's been speaking to me about it during the sermon. And God truly is getting ready to do something in 40 days. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Went to Burger King on yesterday to get my son something to eat. Because $10 is in change. We're talking about four double Whopper meals. I'm trying to tell you, don't let four double Whopper meals allow you to miss out on what God is getting ready to do in these next 40 days. Hallelujah. I feel it so strongly in my spirit. Hallelujah. Those at Greater Mission Ministry, they know that I don't do stuff like this all the time. Hallelujah. But they know when the Lord tells me to, I will. So reach out to us. Sow that $40 seed into God. And I'm telling you, believe from a ground to mountain to kingdom view in these next 40 days. Increase your faith so you can increase the perspective in which we see God doing. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, there will be testimonies after testimonies after testimonies what God is going to do. Hallelujah. He's going to manifest it. It's in the realm. It's already been done. You have the victory. But it's going to manifest after these 40 days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those 12 spies had to endure those 40 days before they entered into Canaan. They had to endure those 40 days before they could enter into the promised land. Hallelujah. Jesus had to fast for 40 days and 40 nights and be tested of the enemy 40 days and 40 nights before he can descend back into heaven. Hallelujah. God is going to show you something. God is going to show you something. So, Father, right now, I thank you and I bless you and I lift you up because you're worthy of praise. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for the people, God, has been obedient to your word as it relates to the offerings and tithes here at this ministry, God. Father God, I thank you for their obedience. I thank you for the love that they have for you, God. And, Father, today, right now, through your word, you've encouraged me to open up the door for your people to sow a $40 seed into these next 40 days. That's just a dollar a day, Lord. But, Father, Father, I realize through the word that something is getting ready to happen in their lives, going to manifest in their lives in 40 days. And, Father, I thank you for opening up the door to sow that seed. Hallelujah. I know that there's going to be testimony. I know that there are going to be testimonies of what you did when these 40 days had ended. So, Father, I thank you and I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you have already shared with me to share with them that the 40 days starts that when they hear this message. So even if they hear it a week from now, they can step into the arena that you have opened. Father, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Because we understand that our relationship with you is personal. Hallelujah. It's personal. Hallelujah. And thank you, Lord, for opening up the door because the truth be told, we don't have to. Hallelujah. But we thank you because you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you all for being a part of the broadcast. We're going to pause here momentarily to prepare for Holy Communion. Be blessed.
Hallelujah. Let us now prepare for Holy Communion. It's very important that we continue to honor this tradition that the Lord has prepared for us. Uh, it's not an Old Testament thing. It's not just a, a old school biblical thing. But God wants us to continue to operate in Holy Communion. There may be someone here today who may be thinking that, you know, why are they having communion on this Sunday? Um, I was out of town for the last uh, two weekends, and I wanted to make sure that I presented the Holy Communion to you all because it's very important. But also, God wanted me to share with you today that um, not to live in the tradition, ma'am, that I always have to be on first Sunday. The Bible says, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. So it's not wrong that I'm not doing it on first Sunday. It's wrong if I wasn't willing to do it because it wasn't on first Sunday. I want you to know that we need to get out of those rituals that it was passed down to us that does not line up with the word of God. He said, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, we understand that everybody doesn't live with a pastor. So, we, so what is he saying there? Hey, you can take Holy Communion by yourself. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. You can take Holy Communion by yourself. He says, often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The key is in remembrance of him. That's the only stipulation that God gives as it relates to taking on a communion. <laughs> that you remember me when you do it. Not for Sunday. Not wearing black and white. The only stipulation that he gives is that you remember me when you do it. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 23, it says, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for this sacred time, God, that we commune with you through the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now, God, that we be touched by this experience. I pray that we be elevated by this experience. I pray that we have a kingdom view perspective through this experience, God. Father, we thank you for allowing us to partake in the precious body of and the blood of our Lord. And Father, we just thank you today because of the love that you have and that you allowed him to die on the cross and to lay down his life for a person like me. Father, allow us to make this Holy Communion experience a personal one with you today. We're not doing it out of form or fashion, God, but we're doing it because you have asked us and called on us to carry out the partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ with one another. So, Father, we thank you, and we are in remembrance of you as we do this. In Jesus' name, amen. First, they took the bread, and after they had break it, they take and eat the bread, which represents the body of Jesus Christ. And then they took the cup, which represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and strength. Hallelujah. We thank you for being part of our service and a part of our broadcast today. We pray that you heard something today that will cause you to have a closer relationship 
with God. So until next time, until Thursday, Bible study, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.